Hi y'all everyone, welcome to today's session on my self-study and today I'll be taking my toasties. I don't know if you can see that, yeah. So it's going to be very, very interesting because um, I find the um, cell circle, yeah, like how eukaryotic cells reproduce, how they replicate their cells, very interesting. So yeah, would we say short prayer before we continue please? Hmm. Dear God, I pray you grant us understanding even as we study today. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, I'll get to it quickly. And first of all, I was able to scrapple down a few things. I don't know if you could see this. Yeah, I believe you can. So um, the first thing we'll look at will be the cell circle. Now, there are five stages to the cell circle. You have the G1 the S, the G2, the M, and the GO. So now you can see the G1, you can see the S, you can see the G2, you can see the M, and you can see the GO stage. Now, the G1, the S, and the G2 are collectively known as the interface stage, okay? So I said there are five stages of the cell circle. The G1, known as the pre-synthetic gap, you have the S, which is the synthesis phase. You have the post-synthetic phase. You have the mitosis, and you have the GO stage. Okay, so G1, S, and G2 are collectively known as interface. This is mitosis, okay? So now the next thing will be, what is the GO stage? The GO stage is the stage whereby a cell is performing its normal function, it's not ready to replicate it's just okay now before i i don't want to get things complicated i just want you to follow through things so first of all just keep in mind that the go stage is that stage whereby you have your cell your cell is just on its own it's not ready to replicate like the cell is not even thinking about dividing it's just on its own like it's just carrying out its normal function and stocks okay so i would like to look at the g1 s and g2 stage which I said earlier, collectively known as the interface stage, okay? First, okay, another question I would like to ask would be, mm, or rather, before I ask that question, I would like to point out that the DNA in the interface stage and the DNA in the mitosis stage are different. The DNA in this interface stage is less compact, is uncoiled. You see it at dots, the chromatin. I think I have it as a structure here. So you would see this is the DNA in the interface stage. This is the nucleus. This is the nuclear membrane, okay? And you have your nucleus containing your DNA. So this is the DNA as chromatin in the interface stage. It is less condensed. It is uncoiled. And why? That's the question why would the DNA in the interface stage be less condensed? Okay, we would find out. Now, the DNA in the mitosis stage, prophase, from the prophase stage of the mitosis stage, is being condensed into chromosomes. So you can see DNA here as dot, 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 but you can see DNA here as condensed chromosomes, homologous. Okay, so I've been talking about the interface saying G1, S, G2 as interface, but then what exactly, what's in the G1, what's in the S, what's in the G2, and then what's even in the mitosis, and why, what, what is prophase, and what's, you know, so that will be the next thing I would look at, I hope we are getting this, so, um, your G1 stage, remember interface is what, G1, S, and G2, right, so your G1 stage, which is your first stage of your interface, is known as the presynthetic phase and presynthetic okay s is synthesis so you you might want to guess okay g1 is before s so it's pre presynthetic phase okay now that is the first stage of the interface and at this stage your cell has just come from the go stage remember i said the go stage is the stage whereby the cell is normal it's functioning on its own it's not preparing to divide it's just on its own and then boom an offshoot of g1 stage now, from GO to G1 stage, in the G1 stage, what happens to your cell? Remember in the GO, it wasn't doing anything, not preparing to divide, just carrying out normal functions. Now in the G1, what happens? Now you're, in your G1, your cell that was not planning on dividing will begin to produce 
organelles we begin to produce the um, mitochondria we begin to produce um this was meant to be the intercalated this was meant to be the um, endoplasmic reticulum. I was trying to make it intercalated and stuff. Anyway, so in your G1 stage, your cell begins to produce mitochondria. It begins to produce ribosomes and endoplasmic reticulum. This would be for energy. This would be for protein synthesis. So basically, in your G1 stage, your cell begins to produce organelles that it will use for energy and um, protein synthesis. And also, you see that the cell begins to increase in size. You know and then at the g1 stage there is a restriction point this restriction point is like it serves it has p53 that's protein 53 which helps to correct the dna let's say the dna doesn't have like it wasn't well complemented let's say a instead of pairing with c it's been teared but it's been paired with c you get like atgc base pairing right let's say there was a mistake in the base pairing so this restriction point will look through your dna is this dna okay for it to go into the replication stage you know so there's a restriction point between the g1 and s and your protein p53 the gene is tp53 okay so now in your s phase what about your s phase when your cell gets into the s phase basically what it does is to replicate its dna and by replicating its DNA, it will have two sister chromatids. Now, in the G1 stage, your cell had one chromatid. One chromatid, which is a chromosome. You can refer to it as a chromosome. Chromosome, one chromatid. In the S phase, where it replicates its DNA, it will have two sister chromatids. And this is a chromosome. So the ploidy does not change. You still have your 46 chromosomes. 23 homologous pairs, if you want to say 23 homologous pairs equals to 46 chromosomes, but then you have 92 chromatids. In the next stage, which is the G2 stage, what happens? In your G2 stage, you would see that, sorry, you would see that, okay, your cell, remember from, sorry, I took it to the, I'm so sorry. In the G1, you see that, okay, it increases in size mitochondria and protein synthesis um organelles and stuff and then you see the cell replicating here and then in your g2 stage the cell continues to increase in size and what happens again is that it will check are there enough organelles for two daughter cells because at the end of mitosis you would have two identical daughter cells that are deployed so it will check are there enough organelles to check are there enough um yeah enough organelles enough cytoplasm that's the cytosol is it enough for to contain to go into two equal sized you know it has to be equal because if it's not equal that's a sign for cancer that's a sign for trouble you know so yeah so and then as this stage as this cell after it has ensured and checked you to check whether there is enough cytoplasm it to check whether there is enough organelles for two daughter cells before it will go into mitosis so from this g2 so g1 has a restriction point that will check for dna and g2 has a restriction point that will check for is there enough cytoplasm is there enough organelles and it will also check the dna that has been replicated it will check whether the dna is well replicated are there um let's say was it wrongly paired was it wrongly replicated and stuff like that because if it is then it will repair it before it will take it into the mitosis stage where it will start dividing. Failure for it to recognize this will lead to cancer. So let's keep on going so I don't bore you. So the next is the control of the cell. I've already said speaking about this. So I said from here, sorry, when we looked at this, we saw that. From the G1S, there's a restriction point. There's a control center. It will check the DNA. Are you okay? You know, is the DNA fine? From the G2, entering into the M. Remember, this is the interface. Then the M. So, entering into the M stage, G2, there's a checkpoint for checking cytoplasm and stuff. Yeah? So, this is basically what's here. A minute, please. So, this is basically what's here, whereby you see your um, G1. Is the DNA good enough? You know to go into the next stage that's your restriction points and then um sorry the cell circle is so, okay in the case whereby you have your dna not being fine 
the cell circle will be arrested, meaning that it will not it will continue into the mitosis stage, whereby it will go ahead and divide and bring about cells that are maybe not equally sized or the quality of the cell is not good. So in a stage whereby you don't have this cell being arrested, let's say the DNA is damaged and the control the restriction points between G1 and S do not notice that, do not check that, do not repair it, or the restriction points between G2 and S do not yeah, G2 and M, sorry, do not check it, then you would have cells that are not good in quality or quantity. And when they get into the mitosis stage and they replicate, replicate and replicate and increase in number, it could lead to metastasis and you see cancer and all stuff like that. So um, basically that's it. And then now we'll go into mitosis. We've been hearing mitosis, mitosis. If you've been expecting to hear more on mitosis, here we are on mitosis. So mitosis has four stages. Remember the cell circle G1, S, G2. The three of them are collectively interface. Then next you have mitosis. In your mitosis stage, there are four stages. You have your prophase, you have your metaphase, you have your anaphase, and you have your telophase. Now let us start with prophase. This is prophase. I don't know if you can see that. So in your prophase stage, okay. Now let's this is a cell that has just left interface into prophase. This is not yet this is actually the end of prophase, okay? So as a cell entering into prophase, remember from interface, right? Interface into prophase, interface into metaphase, into mitosis, sorry. So as a cell enters into the prophase stage, this chromatin that used to be in the interface stage will now be condensed right and its centrioles will begin to move to opposite poles and you would see that um, the nuclear membrane begins to dissolve and the nucleoli disappears so i think i mentioned like five distinct things first i said that you would see well the chroma the chrome the chrome the dna sorry yeah, you can see the chromatin condenses into chromosome, right? And you can see that your nuclear membrane begins to dissolve. You can see the nucleoli disappears. You can see the centrio moves to opposite poles. The centrio here begins to move to opposite poles. And another thing again is that at the end of prophase, you would see that the kinetical, kinetical fibers will extend from chromosomes and they will meet up with specific spindle apparatus yeah so yeah so the next will now be your interface sorry what am i saying the next will be metaphase i'm so sorry next will be your metaphase stage so um mitosis first is prophase next is metaphase your metaphase stage you would have your homologous chromosomes they will align by the metaphase plates or you can call it the equatorial plates so first we saw that in the prophase what happens your chromosomes get your chromatin gets condensed into chromosomes nuclear membrane begins to dissolve nuclearly disappears spindle apparatus moves to opposite poles and the kinetical fibers connect yeah with the spindle apparatus so um now, in the metaphase stage, the next thing that the chromosomes do is to align by the metaphase plates. And you can see that they each have a connection to the centrio. And the centrio has moved completely to opposite poles. They are aligned at the metaphase plates. Then the next thing that will happen in anaphase is that you would see that the sister chromatids separate. And they move to opposite poles. So, but then they maintain the central mare. This is the central mare. This round thing is the central mare. So you see, sister chromatids separate, yeah, and they what? And they maintain their central mare. Like despite their separating, they both have central mare. Okay. So yeah, that how what? Ha so in anaphase, you have separation of sister chromatids with both maintaining central mare, and they move to opposite poles of the cell. So, what will be the next stage? The next stage will be your telophase. So, your telophase 
and cytokinesis actually because the end of the telophase is cytokinesis. So in your telophase, remember sister comatids had, had separated and moved to opposite poles in anaphase, right? What you have is that you would see that Okay, telophase is basically an opposite of interface because then you see our nuclear membrane that disappeared in prophase has appeared. Your nuclear membrane has appeared and you'd see that your spindle apparatus, the spindle fibers have disappeared. They've disappeared. And what again? You'd see that um, your nucleoli, your nucleoli should start to appear. Oh yeah, it's not, yeah, but it should start to appear. And then the cells now make a cleavage furrow. They want to, they begin to like, because they've moved to opposite poles, look as if they want to separate. However, they don't, they, they don't separate completely except at the end of telophase. So these daughter cells, identical chromosomes, everything, will separate at the end of telophase. So that means I can ask you, at telophase, how many chromosomes do you have? There are actually four chromosomes. One, two, three, four. Except when separated, they have two, two chromosomes. And it's at the end of telophase that they separate into sister, rather into two daughter cells. Yeah. So we see that at first we started with one cell and we see one cell giving two daughter cells and they are identical the same genetic material with the parents and all now mitosis occurs only in somatic cells yeah that's it cannot occur in in um, reproductive cells okay it cannot occur in germ cells like gametocytes <clears throat> basically mitosis cannot occur in germ cells in gametocytes yeah so it can only occur in body cells, like the somatic cells, normal body cells. So yeah. So at the end of it now, you see it looking just as in what, just as in interface where we started. You can see the centrioles have gone back into their central zone. You can see your nuclear membrane. You can see your chromatin. It has decondensed. Yeah, that's something I should have mentioned at your telophase stage. Well, actually at the end of it, yeah, your chromosome, your condensed chromosomes. Or begin to they will uncoil into chromatin so yeah basically and uh, I think that should be all for today I hope I did not bore you with so much information and yeah so some things I like to point out would be that remember the cell circle has five stages G1 S G2 M and G O so in essence after it has finish dividing and all it will go back to not dividing and cells that don't divide at all will spend their whole time in go but then cells that divide from go they will go back to g1 to s to g2 to m and to go again so it's a circle that's why it's called cell circle and yeah i remember in your mito my your mitosis stage there are four stages your prophase your metaphase your anaphase and your telophase and at the end of telophase you have cytokinesis thank you very much bye